three up, two across, tap that play button three times, and walk through the archway into Dialogue Alley. Hello, and welcome to Dialogue Alley, a podcast about Harry Potter books, book translations, and all other things magical. I am Eric. I'm Melanie. And the two of us are going to spend some time with you today talking about Harry Potter stuff. Particularly some Harry Potter books. Exactly. Wow. And (laughs) even more particularly, some covers for some Harry Potter books, which I feel like we've talked a lot about covers recently, but I I feel like some of our discussion has just fueled... Uh, like a need for more discussion on covers of books. I feel the same way. I feel like every time we have like these deeper conversations about covers, it gives us a new idea for a new conversation about covers. Um, So here we are talking about covers, but I feel like that's something that we're so passionate about is the cover art. So that's why we like talking about it. It is, but we not only talk about books on this show, we talk about other Harry Potter things as well. Uh, But Harry Potter translations are kind of the thing that brought um, Melanie and I and Carly, who's not here today, together is just that that wonderful global community of reading Harry Potter in a bunch of different languages. And I know we like to collect them all because we're crazy. Yeah, we have a lot of books and we We love them. We do. (laughs) Um, But you know what we don't have a lot of this week? No, but I bet you're about to tell me. Uh, We don't have a lot of news this week. Oh, all right. So uh, why don't we talk about what we got? So we have a couple things of... First, I do want to mention that there is a new French box set being released for the 25th anniversary. Yee! And that kind of ties in with what our, our main segment tonight is going to be about, which is about the 20th anniversary art versus some of the original art for, for various books. But the French books took a different direction with their 25th anniversary set, and they just went back to the original cover art that all the French books have had and have just a beautiful box to store them in. And it even looks like they come with, um, do they come with cards? Do you think it looks like cards? I don't know if those are the cards or if those are the covers. I'm hoping that those are the covers because the entire image, like there's no um, text or font or anything on these images. It's just the artwork. So I'm really hoping that those are the covers. That would be so so stinking cool yeah and if if it is just the covers that's very reminiscent of like the first three swedish books that they have Mm -hmm. where you can just it's there's no there's no no wording on the front at all it's just the art which is really cool yeah that Um, there's um like the german teal character box set um doesn't have any text block or anything like that so that one is also very cool um yeah i love when you get those books where it really gets to feature the art so that's what i'm really hoping but so exciting that it's a 25th anniversary set i feel like we're gonna start seeing those cropping up i agree and i I think it's gonna be interesting to find out which ones kind of stick with the original art versus which ones do something new and exciting um and how exciting is the new one i mean we don't know if if they do something new stay tuned If, if the box is any indication i think we are in for a treat I agree. And I did zoom in on the little UPC and it said 92 euro, which is even more exciting because that's not bad. That's that's not bad at all. Even if like $40 shipping, that's under $150 for a pretty amazing looking set. So I don't do we have a date that this is going to be released? Uh, uh, let me I couldn't find one when I was looking at them. Um, Available the January 19th. Pre-orders. Wow. Yeah, pre-orders are now open, um, and I guess they're available January 19th. Wow, that's coming up quick. Oh, and there's a little button for Amazon. 
like I guess Amazon France, but um, they're available on Amazon. So it's just a matter, I guess, of seeing if they're going to ship here. But I am always a fan of buying things through Amazon. That's amazing. Yeah, well, you know that you're going to get it. And if you don't, you complain, you'll get it anyway. Well, yeah, I mean, but for me, I have an Amazon credit card. So that means it's future Melanie's problem. Aha. And I love that. Yes. But you know what else I love? I love that you were just on the Alohomora podcast, and that, that's coming out December 3rd. So tell me about that. Yeah, so cool. Um, I got to record with some of the crew from Alohomora, and we did an episode um, where we did like a chapter review. I originally thought that they did like a chapter by chapter, but I think that they get requests for chapters that people want discussed which is really cool. So um, we discussed the Nicholas Flamel chapter from Sorcerer's Stone, which is a short-ish chapter, yet jam-packed with goodness. Um, So it was a lot of fun recording with them, kind of seeing how they record their podcast and just kind of cool getting to know other people that are in the MuggleNet family of podcasts. So really cool. So that episode will be out December 3rd. So... Feel free to listen, because I will be there. I will feel free. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I will I will feel free, and I will listen to that episode. Yay! Um, yeah, no, very exciting. I can't wait to hear it. Um, is there anything <laughs> else? Anything else we need to talk about news-wise? Um, huh. Well, okay, so here's the thing. is I don't know if we're going to be recording an episode like the week of Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving's on a Thursday. We typically record on Thursdays. Episodes come out on Mondays. This is some behind the scenes secret info. Um, so we might do some sort of episode in between or something. I don't know. We're going to figure something out to make sure that an episode still comes out every Monday. However, the day after Thanksgiving, um, me and my husband and my mom and our best friend Travis are going to the Forbidden Forest Experience in upstate New York. And I am so excited. So I'll be able to tell you guys all about that. Um, when awesome. That I've seen, I've seen pictures of that. It looks pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I know. And we're going at like eight o'clock at night. Like we're, we're going pretty late. Um, it's only like, I would say it's probably like a two hour drive from where we live. It's really not like terrible. We'll probably like listen to some Harry Potter stuff on the way, probably maybe even listen to this podcast on the way, who knows? Um, but I'm super excited about that, and I can't wait to tell you guys all about it. And I can't wait to hear about it. <laughs> well, good, because you're gonna. I'm going to, whether I like it or not. <laughs> good. All right. Well, that's it for news. Let's move on to the main segment and talk about some of our favorite things, books. I'm so excited about this topic because, um, you know, we've been talking a lot about the fact that Philosopher's Stone just celebrated its 25th anniversary, which is amazing. This coming year, 2023, we're going to be celebrating Sorcerer's Stone's 25th birthday, which is insane. Um, We cannot wait to see what the United States is going to come up with to celebrate the 25th anniversary. Um, But for now, with so many books that have 20th anniversary editions, what we thought we would take a look at is books that have their own original cover art. This was something that was heavily debated in last episode. Um, So books with their own original cover art versus their 20th anniversary cover art. so funny because I'm looking at the notes now and I didn't include the U.S. in this. So there uh, with the U.S., there are six different original cover arts um, that have 20 20th anniversary cover art um, because there are hold on. I'm going to look it up because I have this as a little tab on my website. 
Um, so let's see I how think, many there I are. I think while you're, while you're looking, what caught my eye about all of this, and my ears, I guess, because you can listen to some of the news elsewhere also, like, I'm very excited for this 25th anniversary just because of all of the new stuff we got from the 20th anniversary. And mm-hmm. there were languages that didn't do anything for the 20th. So you know that something's coming for the 25th, like we just mentioned the French one. Yeah, we didn't get anything super special from um, French other than I'm pretty sure they did like they used the Brian Selznick art and maybe they considered that their 20th anniversary editions, which that's fine, but that's not original content that we're getting. Um, So, right. Well, even the even the the UK like Philosopher's Stone anniversary book that just came out, they at least like they went back to the roots. They used the Thomas Taylor art, which is cool. Um, actually, I think it's really cool. If any book was going yeah. to use that art, it, it would be that one. But they stuck all those extra pages at the end, right? Mm-hmm. I think the only missed opportunity is the gilded side edge. That, <sighs> that, Don't get me you know, started. Don't had they started. called any of us, we would have been able to offer a free of charge suggestion on how to improve their anniversary book. So maybe the U.S. ones will will get gilded. Maybe someone from Scholastic listens to our podcast and they're like, wow, it's the silver anniversary. We should do a silver gilded side edge on our 25th anniversary book. Maybe. If you're listening, Scholastic, caca, caca. Um, that's my that's my call. Well, we've given Scholastic enough money to make our opinions maybe count a little bit more than your <laughs> than your so. average Joe's opinion. <laughs> they have a lot of my money. Um, so as far as um, 20th anniversary editions go, we have had 15 different 20th anniversary, um, either copies of book one or full sets, which is really cool. Um, 15. Why did I put this? Oh, yeah, that counts. I was like, why did I put Chinese? But um, Chinese does count because they have a 20th anniversary as well. I'm, I'm sorry. Like, I'm going all mishmashed. Um, but we're going to focus on the six that had original cover art and then new 20th edition cover art. So the first books that we can, or the, the first set of books that we could look at are the British English. So the original cover art the thomas taylor cover art the first cover art that existed versus the 20th anniversary british cover art which are the house editions what right and thoughts? those came and those came out in a whole slew of languages too right oh my but gosh yeah it's and both hardcover and softcover and the hardcovers were different than the softcover like mm-hmm. i completed I've said this before. I've completed the hardcover set of the UK English in all seven, ho- or not all seven, all seven books in all four houses, um, and that like that's it enough. was a great it was a great idea for the first two books, and then I'm like, Wait, what have I gotten into here? Um, but they do look really cool on your shelf, and they did some cool yeah. stuff with the side edge, and I think going back in time, I might not have bought. All of them, I might have just stuck to one house. I don't know. Who knows what what future Eric could offer past Eric. But I think they're really cool. Um, I think for a collector like us, where we have to draw the line somewhere and how many to buy, that's kind of frustrating to me. I wish there would have mm-hmm. just been like one anniversary set. I wish it was set. up front. I, like, I wish I had the knowledge I have now when the book one came out. Because when book one came out, we thought, oh, this is what we're getting. We're getting book one. Great. Let me buy all eight. I'm going to get all yes. four well, and, hardcover and four I, paperback. I even did that. I bought four hardcover. I bought the Slytherin paperback because it was the cheapest. And I was about <laughs> to buy I was about to buy the other three paperback. And then like they had announced Chamber of Secrets. And I'm like, uh, no, no. I'm not doing nope. this. Nope. Nope. So <laughs> well, I... I, I gave the Slytherin paperback away to a friend for Christmas that year, and I was like, <laughs> I'm only doing hardcover, but I guess I'm doing all of them. And my issue is with this is once all seven books came out, then they came out with the box set. And you guys all know me. I'm a sucker for a box set, and I don't have a box set for any of these books. Have I thought about getting the Hufflepuff box set? Yes. 
Um, I still go back and forth about it. Um, do I need two copies of these hardcover books? No, I don't. Um, they look amazing on the shelves. Do I think that there are some quality issues with the hardcover? Yes. I think that the dust jacket is kind of flimsy. Yeah, Eric's showing off his shelves right now. They look amazing. Mine are up, up there. Oh, there they are. Beep, yep, boop. they're at the top. Um, they look amazing. The side edges and the detail on the side edge for the paperback and hardcover are beautiful. The fact that they alternate um colors from like house color to black is really nice the foiling colors that are chosen is really nice though huh (laughs) did you realize and i wonder if this is different for the box sets but book one hardcover doesn't have the same foiling that the other black Hard Correct. Covers have because book one, the foiling is all the same for all four books. Huh. Am I right? Am I right on that? No. Well, book one, all of the. I'm turning around. So sorry if I sound like I'm not here, but I'm here. Um, book one hardcover are all black. Uh, Ravenclaw and the Ravenclaw one has blue font. The, right, it's the, the converse of the house colors. Like, right, it's like, it's like red, red for blue, Griffin, green, yeah. yellow. Um, yep. But then when you get to the next black book, which is books three, five, and seven, they all have the other color. Like if it's Ravenclaw instead of blue, they have bronze. If it's um, Gryffindor, it's gold. If it's Slytherin, it's silver. If it's Hufflepuff, it's um black i think or it's well and mine yellow, mine, it's yellow mine on the stick black. mine stick with that from book two to the end huh huh i mean my hufflepuff one is the like that's the only set that is cohesive all the way throughout it goes like the font color goes yellow black yellow black yellow black whatever um but i'm looking at the other ones and i'm like wait it goes blue and then it goes bronze 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 yeah. Red, gold, 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 gold. Yep. That's a minor. And I believe if you are to buy the new box set that comes out, that is changed. Oh, man. Don't tell me that. Well, I just did. And that shouldn't mean you need to buy them because these because books caused enough head, stress. Like, like, I would only buy the Hufflepuff one. Like, if I were to buy that box set, I would only get the Hufflepuff box set because I'm a Hufflepuff and I need the Hufflepuff books. However, I would only want the Slytherin, Ravenclaw, and Gryffindor sets because that's a different first book. Like, book one is different. It's different. It's like a second state. Yeah. Oh, come on. Come on, Bloomsbury. You have enough of my money, Bloomsbury. They They know how to get it. Um. But if you're asking what what do I prefer, the original versus these new ones, obviously I prefer the original. I, I think that is so iconic. However, I do think in terms of an anniversary celebration, this was almost over the top in terms of I celebration. I did not need eight sets. I didn't. No. Let's be I real. But that's a good thing. I'd rather have like th- – this seemed to be an anniversary that appealed to the mass Harry Potter fan, not just like the niche we got to buy them all people like we sometimes are. Mm-hmm. Like I, this is very much like, oh, I am a Gryffindor. I'm gonna buy all them again in the Gryffindor colors, and which and is great. I, and then you get the I, offer, like more money for hardcover, less money for yeah. softcover. Like they have right, now, tons of options. See if you agree options. with me on this, because I know obviously that the Juniper book, Juniper book covers came out before these came out. Now, do you think that like they saw how well these were doing and they were like, that's a good idea. I'm gonna do house editions and look. Like so many people bought the Juniper book covers. I wonder how many many people are going to buy these covers now that they're official. I I mean, they're too, it's too similar to have, to definitively say like, nope, there's no way someone saw that and not copied it, but was inspired. Like there was definitely some inspiration there. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta think so. You gotta think that uh, the people over at Juniper books probably felt a little bit stung with that one. And you Um, know, we mentioned, we mentioned Juniper last time. I think it's worth mentioning Juniper books. They're not like an official Harry Potter, like publishing company or anything like they are essentially like you can buy these cool covers, 
that are a little more personalized because they're not like an officially published cover. And then you can just right. use those as like the jacket on your existing book. So you don't like buy the actual book. You just buy the jackets and you put can. them out. You, you can, can buy, yes. You can yeah. buy the you can buy the books. Um, and then they they don't just do Harry Potter books too. They do Lord of the Rings right. and they do the Brontes and they do uh, like ev- everything. I mean, those are just two that I right. just pulled out of there. But, but the, um, those are ones. The that they books do. the books that they give you are ones that they have just purchased. They're not publishing their own books. Like they've purchased them and switched the covers for you. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Johnny says they fixed it in later prints, and it means you need to buy them all, Melanie. I don't like that, Johnny. Mm-mm. It makes me grouchy and mad. But also the collector in me is kind of stoked that I have all, like, first printings of them, and they oh, have, yeah. like, this error. Like, I kind of like that. <laughs> well, that leads me to believe that maybe it wasn't planned. Um, yeah, like maybe yeah that's just, what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Right? This turned into like, we're like, oh, we're just going to have a quick little talk about these books. But like, see, this is what happens is we discover all these discoveries as we discuss. Um, we discover discoveries. <laughs> um, why don't we chat about super quick the American English um, covers, which I feel like obviously need to be mentioned, but we don't have to get um, super into because we have talked these books books to death um yeah i didn't put them in our original notes sorry guys i can't believe i forgot them well but, i feel like we've talked we've talked about all the grand prey mary grand prey art for books one through seven and for comparing sure. them to the brian selznick box set that came out on the anniversary we've talked A about that that was percent. one of the box sets that we love and oh no sorry five box sets that we love and we think you'll love them too but boom that's it <laughs> yes because uh the I mean, the Brian Selznick art is some of my favorite art in the world. I am heavily obsessed with the 20, 20th anniversary American cover art. I love Brian Selznick so very much. I am such a massive fan of all of his work, not even just his Harry Potter work, his stuff across the board. I am just in in complete awe of his work. Um, So it is impossible for me to compare the original Mary Grand Prix cover art to the 20th anniversary. I think that they are both phenomenal, um, just pure works of art in their own right. Are we doing like a, (laughs) like bizarro universe thing where if we had to have only one of them exist, what would we have? I can't Stay. choose between these two. I cannot. I, know. I physically. I was going to say because this one's impossible. Me. It would. Yeah. Fi- this. I. I'd be able to choose between all of the other ones a thousand percent. I would definitely be able to choose the the Mary Grand Prix original cover art and the Brian Selznick twentieth anniversary. There's zero chance you couldn't pay me to choose between the two. I can't. I, I think if I cannot. had to, if I had to pick, I'd pick the originals just because so much of the like world has grown to love Harry Potter because of the Mary Grand Prix art. Not to say the Brian Selznick ones are not spectacular because they are. I just can't imagine a world where like the Grand Prix art and the movie font that we love, like none of that exists because I mean, the Grand Prix book didn't exist. I agree with you, but I can't choose. I love like the Brian Selznick art. It's in like my top five, like favorite cover arts in the world. I'm just He's just a genius. It, I, that's all I can say. <laughs> well, that's why it was one of the five box sets that I we, know. That's uh, why I picked love. it. <laughs> that is why I picked it. I love that one. Um, all right. Let's talk about the Dutch art because that's something that we haven't really talked about too, too much. Um, so there is the original Dutch cover art um, and then the... 20th anniversary of that is um they had come out with a, a set of paperbacks um a while back yeah. before the 20th anniversary that have this like bold graphic cover art it's gorgeous the colors that they choose for it are very very bold um and we talked about uh the book one in one of our translations of yeah the shows. yeah for sure and th- they're they're amazing um but for the 20th anniversary, they came out with a hardcover box set of the of that paperback. Um, so 
that was such a cool like surprise set to get because if I had to pick any set that was like a paperback to have it in a hardcover it would be these books they're they're amazing um the original Dutch cover art I feel like is one of those that would need to be I don't know I feel like it's like an acquired taste kind of cover art it's if not one of my sense. favorites. It's honestly, I say this every time we do a tots. I'm like, if it's original cover art, I'm giving it an outstanding because it's original cover art and blah, blah, blah. I I couldn't give this an outstanding. I, I just think it, it it's Harry's butt and a broomstick. And that is the cover art. So it got a full moon. See Harry's full moon. <laughs> like literally though, like there's a full moon I know. and Harry's full moon. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's excellent. Um, I will say, in terms of, like, anniversary editions, while I I don't have these Dutch ones, I have the paperback book one, but it was interesting that they didn't come out with something different. They're just like, oh, you remember that paperback set we made that was pretty cool? Let's just make it hardcover. Like, it didn't seem like there was a lot of, like, there wasn't a lot of effort in terms of coming up with something new. No. But that doesn't mean that it's not spectacular because, like you just said, if I had to pick hardcover or softcover, I'm going with hardcover. Right. And and that's what's like so crazy about it, too, is you would think that the hardcover would come out first. Like you would think that they'd originally come out with these hardcover books, but they didn't. They saved it for the 20th anniversary, which is really cool. Um, Yeah. I mean, between the original art and this, I would definitely choose the 20th anniversary art that isn't technically like 20th anniversary art. But the hardcover book with this art um, is it's amazing. So, um yeah, the whole box in itself is really beautiful, too. Um, the spines look beautiful on a shelf. So I I really enjoy this set. Um, the next set is going to be a very controversial one. I'm very excited about it. Um, and that is the German original cover art with the German 20th anniversary cover art. Um I feel like very controversial because the German cover art is so iconic. It is seen everywhere. Also, um, I can't say I can't say the illustrator's name is beautiful as Carly does because she always says it like Sabina Wilhelm. Yeah, I can't say it that nicely. I would I would say it completely wrong, but I feel like you guys say it with like like the accent how it's like appropriately supposed to be pronounced. I I I can't. I don't know. I I feel like I would. I feel like I would say it wrong, um, but her work is just so iconic and it's also so recognizable. You can tell her work on any of these, any of the German books that have been done by this particular cover artist. The 20th anniversary cover art is done by someone completely different. However, it's amazing. Amazing. So it's am- It's amazing. I know people that, as iconic as the original German books are, I know people that don't love them, and that's I can see why. Um, I can see why the style of them isn't everyone's favorite, just because of, like, Harry's always prominently in the foreground, and then there's stuff going on behind him. I can see why maybe that's not, like, like ah, I wish he was involved in the scene. But conversely... The anniversary books, there is so much to look at in these books. It is just insane. You could spend probably 20 minutes looking at each of the seven books and then finally maybe feel like you've seen everything. There, there's just so many details and so many little like steampunky like vignettes that are going on and just the way the font is a little bit different, but they're all, they have like a, a theme still, the way that they're formatted to tie them together and they just pick a different solid color for the main background. They just, they're so, so outstanding. I finally got this set. I don't know if I announced that at all. Anyway, did I say that in the news? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if you actually did, but I'm so proud of you. Oh, yeah. I was looking for this one for a while. They're hard to get. They're not really published anymore. I mean, you well, can you get have, the individual you have the books. Box. You have the box. I know. I have the box and the cards that it comes with. So I was hoping for that. And if you just want the books, the books are easy to get. You can just get all get all seven books. Uh, they're amazing they're so amazing so 
I, I mean, you said everything about them that I would have said. They're so detailed. The colors are beautiful. The fonts, they're, every book is different, yet every book is cohesive with the next. And it's like so well done. Everything I would want in a 20th anniversary set. Um, so we have two more sets. The next one is Japanese, another like super iconic cover and very difficult to choose between. Um, are they both done by the same cover artist? I was just going to ask that. Um, it's an American that did the first one. Mm-hmm. I can look mm-hmm. here. Let me grab my. I, feel so I have like... I have all of these that we're talking about, and I feel so happy. I don't have the hardcover Dutch one, but I do have the soft cover. See, um, well, I have so oh, like of of the twentieth anniversary. Gotcha. Yeah, um... like I don't have the hardcover box set for the Dutch books, but I do have the. I don't think I've ever opened this book, to be honest with you. Oh man, I tried to type in twentieth anniversary Japanese Harry Potter, and I just typed in twentieth anniversary Japanese, and it came up with Pokemon cards. Wow. Um, Gotta catch them all. I mean, same with Harry Potter books, right? Am I mean, I? it's all it's all written in Japanese, so I can't I can't tell. Um, let's see. Let's it doesn't see. look to be the same person though. Like I think the style is different. With new cover art. Nope, different cover artist. Got it. Yeah. Miho Satake. I would say the close the closer I look at it, like holding it, it looks different. If you see them far away, they look similar because the color palette's very similar. Yep. But different. No, they're different. Different cover artist. Um, very cool that it's the whole set that was done. Um the uh, again, the original cover art is just so iconic. Um, each one really looks like an etching or a painting. Like they, they're just beautiful interpretations of the book. Um, I feel like the anniversary editions are comparable. Now, here's the thing: um, they came out with these ones, the original 20th anniversary books with cover art by Miho Satake. Those ones came out. There are also these like itty bitty Japanese books. Eric, would are those considered 20th anniversary books as well? Because they that's because they're completely different cover art. Yeah, but they're new, right? Those are like very recent. This I remember buying this book at my old house and I didn't move until 2020. So. And those ones have the 20th anniversary sticker on them. Like they, those are specifically 20th anniversary books. These, the yeah. the itty bitty ones that I'm talking about, um, they're more like almost like an anime style um, cover. Um, I think just in Japan, there's always going to be a demand for books that you can carry around when totally. you're on the train. So, so I don't know I don't if those think, are 20th I anniversaries. I wouldn't say they're officially anniversary books. However, like. I feel like any any book that comes out in like big hardcover, they always have to publish another smaller version. All right, so those ones are going to be uh, those are those books will be up for debate. Um, but what we can say is that the twentieth anniversary art and the original art both are absolutely beautiful. I would probably choose the original art, I think, over the twentieth anniversary. But that's not to say that the twentieth anniversary isn't beautiful. I agree with that. Um, I think that that is, that is fair. Um, this one is also going to be another biggie up for debate. The last books that we're going to talk about are the Swedish books. Um, we have the original Swedish cover art, which is iconic. It's beautiful. Like very often, um, deemed like some of the most beautiful cover art in the world, um, it might it might be my favorite, or if not the favorite in my top three. It oh one thousand percent. I would say that the I say it all the time that the um, Prisoner of Azkaban Swedish original cover art is in my top five. Like if it's not, I would say it might be like my number two, if not my number one. It it's absolutely one of my favorites. Um, and I would say like if you were to ask other people that are just kind of like dabbling in translation collecting I would say one they probably have the complete Swedish set and two they would say that the complete Swedish set of original art is their favorite just because I, I agree it's and if beautiful. you're 
if you don't have any translations and you're listening to the show, I can't recommend this enough. Like, just go buy this. At least just one of the books. They are so cool. And they look mm-hmm. so nice on your shelf. You can display them, you know, cover side out, kind of lean up against something. They, they just look so great next to any Harry Potter merch of any kind. Like, they're just just an outstanding series to have, even if you only have one. Like, it's it's just a, Absolutely. a great part of your collection. Um, And the 20th anniversary books that came out are also absolutely gorgeous. Um, Very different from anything that we have seen, I think, anywhere else in the world, except possibly our translation of the show. I would kind of say that they're relatively similar to that, Um, are the Ali Moss covers of the Swedish books. So the... These covers, are, they kind of look like travel posters. Um, they're very, each book is very cohesive with the next. And you see that a lot when they come out with complete box sets, um, that they have a cohesive theme throughout. Whereas, like, I don't know, you look at the British cover art and you have four different cover artists because the books came out so far apart. Um, this All seven books came out at once. So all seven books are very cohesive beautiful styling um definitely beautiful in their own way in my opinion cannot even be compared with the original swedish cover art i agree with that the the original is just so iconic and so just wonderful and and not to say that these aren't wonderful they're they're different and i think they have their own spin on what cover art can be, like you just said with the with the cohesive theme. I mean, the castle is on the front of every one of these books, and there's like a different scene going on with the same scene, right? Like you mm-hmm. can't, you couldn't anticipate that if you were just going through one at a time before these books had been released. Um, you couldn't anticipate something like that happening. So, I I, I can't, I I would stick with the original Swedish. However, I really really appreciate this new spin on you know a seven book series that you can do once you know what happens and and you kind of know what to focus on and what's iconic like what's an iconic scene from that book that you can put on the front now that you've read all the books right yeah i i completely agree with that um and with that being said i feel like this is a really good segue into our translation of the show Our translation of the show kind of ties in really well with our main segment because this is kind of a controversial um, thought process in the transla- translation collection, translation collecting community. Um, we are going to be talking about the revised Italian edition or one of the revised Italian editions, particularly the one that has new original cover art. Um Now, these books came out as like a 20th anniversary edition of the Italian, which that falls right into what we were talking about in our main segment. You know, the original cover art, original unique cover art with a 20th anniversary cover art. However, um, after a certain point in time, I believe it was like 2017, which that's when Potter Glott came out with his article. I could be completely wrong with that, but I know that that's when the article came out because I did some research on this before I made it our translation of the show. Um, but at that point, the book was so heavily revised that it could basically be considered a new translation. Um, the original translator, who is Marina Astrolago, um is credited as the translator for both the original Italian book one and for this anniversary edition, even though it is so heavily revised. I don't know if someone is credited for all of the revisions, um, but it just makes this book very linguistically interesting, which for us as translation collectors um, definitely makes this book 
in in my opinion, I count this as a separate translation, um, just because it is so heavily revised. I do too, but it doesn't have to be this exact book to right. count for that that new translation. You can also get it, I believe, in the Johnny Duddle cover. I think is that, that, or is I, it the or is it the Kibwishi one? Which one? I. I'm second would, guessing myself. Mm, no, I think it's the Dutch cover art. I'm pretty sure that it's the Dutch cover art came out and the original cover art was released as like a 20th anniversary as well. This is I don't like know. A, I don't know. Is, this is this is a complex it's tricky. Yeah, it's already it's, complex enough. But if, if you want to <laughs> make sure just, that you Carly have just messaged us, <laughs> she said the Dutch is the first one that was was revised. So they came out with like a miniature book, Italian book with the Dutch cover. Um, and it's that like buttery texture beautiful book um so that one what i think was the first one that was revised they also have that same size book same buttery texture with the original italian cover art that one's also the revised and the book that we are talking about today with new original cover art is also um revised text block yes um but we should briefly mention because it fits the theme of the show that the original Italian was the that iconic cover with Harry with the rat hat on mm-hmm. and the chessboard. Just bizarre. Carly and I talked about that, I believe, in like episode two, like one of the first episodes way we ever recorded. Um, way, way back. That that cover is is so bizarre yet amazing that it's it's almost hard to top that in terms of oh, new yeah, art I mean- because – because of it was one of the early adopters. It's so bizarre that it's it's I don't know. I don't even know how to describe it. It's so crazy. It's just crazy to me. That's I, a book I always show people. Like, look at this one. Mm-hmm. I love the original Italian so much. Um, if I had to pick between that one and this cover art, I would also pick the original cover art hands down um especially the first date which most people know the first date of the original italian cover art um features harry without his glasses it says like jk rowling's name is printed incorrectly it's big red font it's like such a wacky book um but yeah i would definitely choose that over this book but this book is definitely still worth chatting about. Um, it is put out by the same publisher, which is Solani Editore. Um, and just like, I, I don't know, I was going to say like a little bit about Italian. We could say a little bit about Italian, even though we have covered Italian books in the past. Um, it's a romance language. Um it evolved from the Roman Empire. It is the least divergent language from Latin, and it's spoken by about 85 million people. It's the official language of Italy um, and is also in Switzerland, San Marino, and Vatican City, which is very cool. On a scale of one to five, how rare would you say this book is? It's not. No, it's not. Pretty pretty easy to get. Go on uh, Amazon and you can be the proud owner of this cover and translation. <laughs> it's a one. I would say it is a one. And um, value of this book, it is the cost of this book. It is face value. like Plus whatever, whatever it costs to ship it to you from Italy. But yeah. you might even, it's, it's Italian. It's such a widely spoken language. You might luck out and find one of these in your local bookstore in what country you're already in so i will say the back of the book says that it is 16 euro so if that gives you a better idea um there there it is um i am so excited to do tot scale on this book i know eric has this book sometimes we pick books that eric like might not necessarily have but this one i know that you have because you were gifted this book i think i was i i remember that i did a trade with somebody um Brian, and graciously, he also included this book in the trade. So that was the first time that someone had just gifted me a book that I didn't own, which was super generous, and I'm very, very thankful that he did that. So thanks, Brian. You rock. I'm smelling this book. It smells so good. 
Well, now like, I'm gonna I smell would give it. <laughs> with your stuffy nose. <laughs> I can still smell it though. I can smell out the left side. I would oh, give it's this great. a solid exceeds expectations. It's great. It so smells good. to me. It smells like a great bookstore. Mm-hmm. Like, like not an whole, old bookstore, but like, like. You know, like Barnes and Noble has a smell. Like you go in there and you're like, oh, it's a bookstore. Like, or even like this, a library, like walking into the library and like getting the like that's like a pretty like nostalgic smell. But no, this is it, it's very nice. Uh, definitely like an E to an E plus, I would say. I'm going um, E. Yeah, I I love it. I feel like that smells phenomenal. Um, size and proportion. I actually I would also give it an exceeds expectations. If not, I'm I might give it an outstanding. I'm gonna give it. I was going out. I was going outstanding. Yeah. Um. It's. I feel like it's like a smaller size. Um. But it's relatively square ish. I feel like as far as books go, like it's it's pretty. It's. I don't know. I feel like it's small for a hardcover, but it's really nice. Like, it's just a very, very nice size length by width. One is cutie. Yeah, I I would agree. I'm going outstanding. I think it's a great book. And I know this is how it feels in your hands, kind of. But it doesn't feel too thick, like, page-wise yeah. to the dimensions. Like, sometimes when they shrink a book down, it gets thicker. Um, not in this case, proportionately See, there we go. Proportionately. Yeah, I was going to say that. It, that still falls it, in the category. Uh, it, it just feels great. So, hooray. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, how it feels in your hand. I would say I, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it another outstanding because of a lot of reasons. I feel like because of the size and proportions it fits super comfortably into your hands um the texture of the cover is that smooth buttery textures which is always super super nice um and it has a really good spine that really just like the book flops right open like it is asking to be read it like no, with without cracking the spine at right, all, this book right, is right, just right. just falls completely flat, and I absolutely love that. So I would I'd give how it feels in your hands an outstanding. I I agree. Uh, I will add one more thing about the the buttery feeling of the cover. It doesn't leave <laughs> a bunch of marks on it like some yeah. of them do. So maybe that's more quality, but um. It doesn't feel like the oils of your hand like are just building up and then like the longer you hold it, the grosser it feels like <laughs> it feels it feels good the whole time. Yeah, no, I yeah, I I definitely love it. Um, quality of the book, I'm going to give. I'm going to give it an exceeds expectations. Um, obviously the spine is done really well, especially if the book is going to like be flopping over my, my beef with the book lies with the gold foiling on the font. Um, I love that it's like an original font. I'll get to that when I talk about the cover art, but it scuffs up very easily. Like my whole font is very, very scuffed. Um, and that really like kind of takes away i feel like from the cover like it's so bold that it stands right out at you um but it's not enough for me like it's the quality is definitely overall so stinking good so the only reason why it's not an outstanding is because of that like look at that like that's sad i agree i'm giving it an outstanding when i put it or no i'm giving it an exceeds expectations the only thing not outstanding to me is again that font when i put this book away on my shelf I have to take out the one next to it, and I stack them, and then I slide them in together. That's the way you got to do it. That's the way you got to do it. I know. Unless your next, unless shame. your next book is the second book in this series, in which case, don't do that. Like you must do all <laughs> seven at once. Um, but I only have the first one, so I can just get to what's next on my list here. It's uh, a, oh, it's a it's a Japanese book, which has like a glossy texture. Like you're you're fine and with I that. have it. I have it next to a short Japanese book, so it doesn't rub the top. Genius. Genius. Well yep. done. That's amazing. There's a shelving tip from yours truly. Ha! Huh, look at you. 
Oh, I love that. Um, cover art and interpretation of the cover art. Now, if we are looking at just book one, which we are, um, I would. Ah, this is this is my internal struggle because, you know, me, I love to give an outstanding to original cover. art. I feel like I'm going to give it an exceeds expectations um, just for the fact that I feel like it's just not particularly my taste. I always kind of yeah, go it's... back to it being like, this is a kid's book. Like this is a children's book. And I, I granted, I love the adult editions as well. I feel like this cover art falls too in between. Like it's not quite adult cover art. It's not quite children's cover art. Is it beautiful, unique cover art? Absolutely. A thousand percent. Um, but for me, it just falls just below an outstanding. I'm taking the E. Um, if you open the whole thing and you, you know, open the the flaps of the jacket, you just have the jacket laid out flat. It's a beautiful piece of art. And you can see the bridge on the back. Yes, it's Hogwarts Castle. It's definitely not the Hogwarts Castle that we have grown to love, which I, I do like that there's a different interpretation. However... When the interpretation of the castle is like so much different than just the actual description of the castle in the book, like that's hard for me to love. But that being said, I like that it's a fresh take on it. So I'm going E because I really like the fresh take. But for my personal style preference, I I don't love. I don't love it. I wish I, the colors are very washed out too, and again, that's part of the style. But I, I just wish there was something a little bolder to to grab your attention versus everything just kind of being this very, like, washed out color style. It's almost like you put a book through a filter, like an Instagram filter, and made it, like, yeah, not as bold. Yeah, I see that. Um, I will say, like, the, the one other nod that I really do love about on the cover when you mentioned like completely opening it up and looking at it as one whole image it's actually really precious that like it's a picture of it's harry standing next to hagrid looking at hogwarts castle and the quote that they chose for the back of the book is harry you're a wizard um and that's that's pretty magical like i feel like that is very well thought out that if you look at this whole piece of art it's harry with hagrid and that quote um like that's, I feel I feel like I have like goosebumps because nothing says Harry Potter more than Hagrid saying Harry, you're a wizard. Like that's the that's the magical moment. That's the moment that Harry's life changed forever, and that that kind of makes this cover um, a bit more magical, especially because how like I don't know if you look at I like I prefer the back of the book to the front in in that aspect because literally it's just this big mountain with the bridge and that quote and um and that's that's just pretty stellar so i i like i like that i do know expectations plus okay oh yeah i'm giving it that too (laughs) i do know in the book community of 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 book harry potter fans that there are, there are very polarizing opinions on this book. There, there are people that just absolutely love it. And there are people that are like, oh, not my thing. So, again, that's kind of what art is for anybody is sometimes people love it, especially when it's new. I feel like we can critique it more when it comes out new. It's not like just the book that's the only one available like Ossetan, right? Um, like we're able <sighs> to compare it to the other Italian book. Right. So um, – Sometimes it's your taste, sometimes it's not. And for a lot of people, it is. And for a lot of people, it isn't. Yeah. Exceeds expectations. Exceeds expectations plus. plus. That's how I feel. E plus. E plus. Because I convinced myself it gets the plus. It deserves the plus. It does. It's a great book. I like that it's I like that it's very different from the original. Like that is a great way to go when you do an anniversary edition. Don't make it exactly the same. If, and if that is uh, a great way to sum up the entire theme of this episode, like that, uh, I think you you done said it. Okay. Um. So with all of that super fun info about twentieth anniversary books. 
out there for you guys. That is all that we have time for today. If you would like to get in touch with us, you can find us all on Instagram. Um, You can find Carly on there, even though she isn't with us today. You can still find her on Instagram and always reach out to her at all the pretty books. You can find Eric at Nocturne Eric. And you can find me at the Harry Potter Collection. You can also find us um, on our various websites. Carly's is allthepreadybooks.net. Mine is theharrypottercollection.com. And we also have a website for this podcast, which is dialoguealley.com. Um, you can see pictures of the translation of the show right on our website. You can access the podcast right on our website. And um, it's a really quick way of getting in touch with us because it goes straight to our email If you, you know, type a little thing right on that website, we get it right away. Um, But if you prefer to email us directly, you can do that at dialoguealleypodcast at gmail.com. You can also find us on Instagram on our Dialogue Alley podcast Instagram, um, which is at Dialogue Alley podcast, believe it or not. Um, You could also find us on Twitter um, at dialogue underscore underscore alley sorry it's a lot of dialogue alleys guys um well, also on that's facebook good. facebook dialogue alley well that's just all the dialogue alley things um and you could also find me on tiktok which is at the harry potter collection um i post a lot of really fun silly little uh harry potter booky things on there um so if you want to listen to this podcast, you can do it on Apple, Google, Spotify, Pandora, Audible, all of those things. Um, and if you feel so inclined, you can leave us a written review. Every so often when we get new reviews, we like to le- uh, read them on the podcast. That's something new that we've been doing. Um, and people have been giving us cool feedback on the feedback, which is crazy. Well, just feedback inception. Um But some other really cool ways that you could support the podcast are by joining us on Patreon. Um, We have several different tiers that you can join at, depending on your comfort level. Um, On there, you can get access to bonus content. You can get access to our Discord, where the conversation is always happening. Um, We have a few people joining us live today. Let's see who's 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 there. Johnny's listening live. Carly actually joined in to listen live at, at the very end. Um, she's got some some stuff going on. And we have Balder here as well, which is so cool. I love having everybody. Harris, Harrison was Harrison. on for a bit, too. Yeah, Harrison on, Harrison was on uh, in at the beginning. But it's cool, too, because everyone's, like, messaging us stuff. Like, Carly's hearing us talking about things. And she's, like, sending us messages to kind of uh, keep us keep us in the loop. So, yeah. Um, yeah, joining us and supporting us on Patreon is a way that you can have more access to um, some really cool Dialogue Alley things. And you could do that by going to www.patreon.com slash Dialogue Alley. Um, and the last thing that I will say is that you can also find us on MuggleNet. We are part of the MuggleNet family of podcasts. Um something that we talked about a bit earlier and you could definitely look forward to more content from us on MuggleNet in the future. Um, we are super excited about this new, um, this new, you know, partnership with them. We're having a lot of fun and we just cannot wait to, um, you know, do more stuff with them in the future and give back more for you guys in the future because of MuggleNet. So, With all of that being said, now it is time to walk back through the archway and into your daily lives, and we will catch you next time. Bye. See ya.